I find it interesting that roots of the monastic movement, the Christian monastic movement, can actually be found back in ancient Judaism, even before Jesus. The Pharisees, whom we all know from the Gospels, are very much, in many ways, very much like the religious orders in the Catholic Church. And we had the Essenes, who had their community at the Dead Sea, who left us the Dead Sea Scrolls. They were a very monastic character. And these groups are seeking God in a certain way. Uh, but the Christian monastic movement, I would say we also see roots for that in the scriptures, where Christians are supposed to fast and seek God and seek peace and pray. Pray always, St. Paul says and Jesus says, and that's what monks are supposed to do too. But the, the formal monastic movement in Christianity really took off in the fourth century. There was, at that time, an openness uh, to Christianity then in the Roman Empire, which had previously been an illegal religion and suffered persecutions. But it eventually became a socially right thing to do. Everybody's becoming Christian. And so the, the moral life of Christians became lax. And the purists among them, the diehards, wanted something more rigorous. So the monastic life where you go out into the desert and live simply and really seek purity became a strong movement, particularly in Egypt. And that's, Egypt became the place of repute for the strongest monks. And that's where John Cashin relearned monasticism and brought it to the West. And St. Benedict then refers to John Cashin's institutes and conferences in his rule. And of course, St. Benedict's rule became predominant in the West during the Middle Ages and has been so ever since. So the origins of monasticism are there. Uh, it's too complex to go into the whole thing, but St. Benedict uh, is, uh, when he comes along, we think of him as the origin of monasticism, but monasticism has been several centuries in the making when he comes along and draws from many traditions and forms a way of life for monks uh, to live together. Uh, and uh, he, he represents a sort of, well, he didn't intend to do this, I don't think, but it turns out to be a sort of ingenious synthesis of the previous centuries. And uh, as such, then it becomes, uh, for subsequent centuries in, uh, in Western Europe, it becomes the premier form of monasticism, just because he, he got so much uh, wisdom in his uh, rule, which reaches back to those early centuries of monasticism, but, but focused it for the new situation in which uh, he found himself in his day. In the centuries following St. Benedict, and especially uh, from the ninth century on, Benedictine monasteries began to be established throughout Europe and were, as I said earlier, were considered a blessing virtually everywhere they showed up.